G'day guys, thanks for joining me for this episode of the Clutch Time podcast brought to you by Fantasy Basketball International. I'm your host, Adam King. Uh, jump over on Twitter and find me at AdamKing91. Uh, and you can also head to our website, www.fbibasketball.com uh, to see all our content, um, which is ramping up slowly. Uh, in today's episode, uh, I'm going to be joined by Mitch Casey of the Ball Boys Pod as we go through a few early ADP battles. It, it is pretty early to be doing these, but um, there seem to be enough drafts taking place, mock drafts, real drafts, for us to get some good samples um, of, of ADPs at the moment. So for those just who aren't sure what an ADP player battle is, uh, it's basically Mitch and I, I sent him a list of uh, names, so two lots of two players. Um, with a very similar ADP, and we're just going to talk about who we prefer uh, at the moment and why. Um, we are going to be looking at roto kind of settings just because, obviously, if we looked at head-to-head, -head, we'd be looking at punting and, and that sort of thing, and, and we, we basically want to give you all uh, an idea of who we'd take uh, in a vacuum, so, so just which player uh, we see as the better option. Uh, so with that, let's get Mitch in. I can, he can probably unmute himself, but I'll unmute him. Hey, Mitch, how are you going? <laughs> G'day, mate. I'm doing really well. Uh, good to be on the podcast for the first time. Love, love the stuff you guys are doing. So, uh, yeah, keen to get into a few, few player battles today. Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're slowly getting there. Um, before we go in, I'm going to, because it is good to, um, have Aussies on the on the yeah. podcast. We're it taking makes over. timing easy, but also it means we can talk about footy for, 30 yeah. seconds and you being in up in brisbane uh up in queensland are you a are you a, a lions fan or not well uh well funnily enough i'm actually a, i'm actually a richmond fan and um, oh, right. okay. <laughs> we 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 managed to go to the game uh a couple of weeks ago richmond versus yep. brisbane uh so we were at the gabba and uh we're, we're very devastated by the end of the game with the uh, the result going the way it was and the the controversy of the the score review with um, Tom Lynch's <laughs> goal and everything. So yeah, yep. yeah, and the fact that it was in Brisbane just stung a little bit more. But yeah, nah, that's uh, yeah. that's my my footy tragic story for the season. Yeah, look, I mean, he he didn't do himself any favors with how he reacted to that to that goal. He he didn't celebrate like he kicked the goal. So. Yeah, whether that played yep. in, I don't. It shouldn't have, but who's to say whether it did or didn't? He, he probably should have just snapped it a lot easier than that. But yeah, whatever. It's all it's all good. We we've had some good memories at the Gabba as well. Twenty twenty, we were at the grand final, yeah. so it's it's not all okay. doom and gloom. But the the recent uh, the recent wounds are still pretty fresh. But uh, now Brisbane are doing well. Obviously, the big win uh, this weekend yeah. is uh, yeah exciting for everyone else who who goes for the Lions. So no, uh, it should yeah. be good. Yeah, and no, I was a bit—I was surprised they got over the demons. Actually, it was. Um, yeah, me too. But nice to see. Always good to see different teams up there. Um, who, who do you support again? Do you have a Do you have a team? Uh, you Essendon. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we don't need to talk about that. We'll, we'll move um, right along. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, look. So look, like I said, I, I did send you a list of names, and just so people know, we haven't talked about this at all in terms of we haven't yeah. sort of chatted or anything about who we're going to say so there could be some that we agree on there could be some that we disagree on hopefully there is a mixture but we'll see we'll see yeah we'll see uh so some, some of them are pretty close you pick some you pick some good ones for me some of them I, i'm very strongly in one side but some of them i, I could be swayed either way yeah look I, I tried to i tried to sort of mix it up a bit um and and I sort of I stuck with top one hundred kind of guys because I think once yeah. you get I mean even that's a stretch but once you get into those sort of tenth round eleventh round twelfth round you're pretty much just drafting for what you need and the the hundredth ranked solid. player and the hundred and fortieth ranked player there's not really a big difference yeah. so um, yeah I, I tried to stick with uh, with players that are that are actually relevant um, so we'll bring up the first guy. So these are banked uh, based on Fantrax current ADPs, which which did get messed up a bit last week. But um, having done a few drafts, this, these are about right. So 
at number four, if if you were number four in a draft, and I have been number four in multiple drafts, yep. <laughs> uh, are you? I'll let you lead off with this one. Are yeah. you taking Joel Embiid or Luka Doncic? So this is one of those close ones that I think that I, I mentioned to you before, but I am I am in the Joel Embiid camp. Um, I think for me, he's I've, I've got a pretty clear top four in my rankings that I feel pretty confident in. And then Luca is like my fifth guy. He's like the next guy of the next kind of tier in the way that I see it. Um, I just feel confident with Embiid. He was a third guy last year. I know some people might be a bit scared off with his injury history, but he actually played more games than Luca last season. He's played over 70% of the NBA's available games in the past four seasons. So um, I think the injury history might be a little bit overblown. You, you do have to take it into account, but at the end of the day, sometimes it just comes down to luck. And um, yeah, I think Embiid, it, he's easy in a roto. He he steps up in a, in a head-to-head. You can you can pump the assists or threes. It's pretty pretty happy to do that. Um, especially in a roto, I think Luca falls back a little bit further with the turnovers and free throw percentage. But in a head-to-head, you can punt those strategies, and and that's why he's up up at this spot in my opinion. But um, even in that cut, even in that format, I probably would still lean Embiid slightly. Yeah, look, this was a close one. Um, and yeah, I mean, the injury thing doesn't worry me too much. Like you said, he, he played more than Luca last year. So yeah. I'd be I'd be as concerned for both players. Like I, I, I'm not going to sort of pick one over the other based on, on that. For me, uh, we'll disagree on this one. So I go, I would go okay. Luca. Partly, I thought you might. Yeah, look, p- partly just because I think Luca is fun, um, yeah, and and we like to have fun. Um, in a and I've taken him at four in a couple of drafts. Um, I know the free throws are a bit of a concern, but I I picked him in a head to head league and then actually ended up being ending as the the first place team in free throw percentage. So it's not. It's not that he's punt worthy with with free throws like um like some of well Jan, even Giannis I, I think you can bounce back but um and and I like the fact that he gives you out of position stats so you yeah. can get get your rebounds up without drafting a big man um it doesn't obviously doesn't sort of get a lot on the defensive end um but I, I just. I like what he brings. I mean, look, I'm probably swayed a little bit by what he's been doing at Eurobasket as, as well. <laughs> yeah, um, looking good. He, he's put up some pretty incredible performances over there. I just really hope he doesn't get injured. Um, so, yeah, look, for me, it's it's Luca, but it's only slightly. Like, I think if I was if I was given – if Luca went at three and, and Embiid was there, I'd be comfortable taking him. So you said you've got a, a clear top four. I'm assuming, well, Jokic would be one. Giannis yep. would be two. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of the work we do is in head-to-head leagues. So I'm, I'm putting that in mind. So it might be a little bit different in Roto, but I think in a first round vacuum anyway, we can we can do this conversation regardless. Um, I think, yeah. So my top four would be Jokic, Giannis, Embiid, and Durant. I think are my, my, my top four because I think they're on a per game value sort of a bit, a bit clear from the rest of the group. Um, And then, and then it becomes into like a a punt discussion. So you've got your James Harden, Luca, um, all those other guys in that sort of next tier. Um, I think depending on which preference you have in, in how you want to construct your team, I think those guys all fall into that next clump. Um, Yeah. But yeah, like like you said with Luca, it it is, it is nice. I do think it's hard to find that combination of high, high points, high rebounds, high assists. There's only a few guys in the league that do that, especially the rebound assist combination. It's sort of like him, LeBron, um, you know, maybe to a lesser extent, like a Jimmy Butler or something like that. But it's, it's not, it's not, or or Jokic is obviously number one. It's not a very common mix out there. So it is, it is a nice way to start your draft and and you do have options to go the field goal or or free throw percentage punt. But I think I'd still just rather uh, an Embiid at this stage, but like I said, it's a close one for me. And I, especially the first round, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter in a sense. Like as long as the, whatever you do after that point makes the most amount of sense, especially in a head to head league when you've got strategies like punting involved, we stress a lot about these kind of things, but at the end of the day, it's, it's just sort of 
picking your direction and which way you want to go. Um, so if, if you prefer Luca, then I would have no issues with someone doing that. Um, it's only when you go a little bit silly and you, you draft someone who has no business being in that first round that I will question it. But yeah, I think it's just at this point in the draft, it's, it's almost a preference thing. Yeah, I think so. And and as you said, it's what you do after this that yeah. that makes this pick sort of viable or not. Like you wouldn't take, um, yeah, you're not going to take Embiid and punt rebounds or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so no, look, I think a very close there and I'm not surprised that, that we uh, agreed to disagree. Yeah. Uh, so shifting down the board a little bit to pick 19. Um, so this one's a little bit, different because obviously yeah. if you look at these two guys, Devin Booker and Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis has clear first round upside um, if everything works out, yeah. uh, which it hasn't for quite a few seasons now. Um, uh, so here, are you sort of, I guess, are you sort of going safer with Booker or, or, or playing for that upside and going with Anthony Davis? Yeah, I think, um, I think this, for the, for the majority of situations and for the majority of scenarios, I'm probably in the Anthony Davis camp. I think that um, there is only maybe a couple of players that might lean me towards a Devin Booker side of things over an Anthony Davis. I think if in the first round I've drafted someone a little bit riskier, like a Kevin Durant, um, you know, in the first round, then I might lean a Booker. And in a head-to-head situation, I might lean towards like a punt steals kind of build or, or, or neglect the defensive stats. Um, I think I did that in one of the mock drafts that you and I were in together, like that first one with um, with Josh Lloyd. Um, but I think in majority of other scenarios, I would be going in Anthony Davis just because, like you said, he, he not only does he have first round upside, he genuinely has number one um, upside. Like he could be the best player in fantasy basketball. The free throw percentages has have held him back the last couple of seasons, which is one of the weirdest uh, phenomenons that happens every once in a while. Um, Russell Westbrook was another example a few years ago. They just forget to shoot free throws. Um, so I think if if that was to correct itself, he has clear chance to be at the number one player in fantasy basketball. He is very injury prone. We know that, but. Again, some of these things can change year to year. Um, I am of the mindset that as long as he doesn't have an injury going into the season, there's nothing limiting him right now. I'll treat him as someone who, you know, you're you're not injured until you are kind of thing. And then you you could get lucky, especially in a head-to-head scenario. You know, you can't really pick when they're injured um, or if they're injured. So... I don't. I tend to not overthink those kind of things as much, and I'll, I'll just go with the upside there because you got you got to take risks in in the draft. You got to take the punts, and and this guy was he was a first round player last season um, per game, and um, and he, he's got higher upside, especially with LeBron getting older and those kind of things. So, yeah, um, majority of the time I'm Anthony Davis in this scenario. Yeah, I'm probably with you on this one. Um, and again, it does uh, a little bit would depend on who I drafted first. So if you've if you've managed to get a pretty safe first round pick, I'm definitely Anthony Davis. Um, and Booker just doesn't excite me too much. Like I know yeah. he scores, and but he doesn't. Uh, I mean, he's he's relatively efficient, but he doesn't get a ton of assists. Doesn't really get a lot of steals. Um, his his floor is really safe. So yeah. so if you if you've taken as you said if you've taken a Kevin Durant or um, someone there in the first round that that has some risk or miss game um, potential, then maybe I would go Booker. But Anthony Davis, yeah, as you said, he, he has number one upside. Um, that feels unlikely, but yeah, we, he's done it before. So oh, he's done it several seasons before. Yeah, um, and. I don't know. You'd sort of be thinking that the Lakers have got to be pretty annoyed after last season and really looking to bounce back, um, whether that's with Westbrook or not. That's yet to be seen. But, yeah, um, I, I, yeah I, I would definitely go Anthony Davis here, I think, um, as a, a player with uh, – I mean, I don't know what what he ended up last season. I think he was number 10 last season. I, I checked just before we came on. So, yeah, first round okay, player, yeah. basically. I'm just bringing yeah. it up now. Yeah, so that that probably sounds about right. And and look, I mean, if he was number 10 um, on a per game last year, and I think if you asked anyone who who didn't look at the rank, you'd say it was a bad season for him. Yeah, um, Obviously, exactly. he missed a lot of games, but... Even in terms of per game production, you would you would think, well, no, he didn't score as much. I don't remember him 
racking up these sort of massive games where he would have five blocks and three steals, but he yeah. finished tenth. So, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's for me, it's it's pretty clearly Anthony Davis. Yeah, um, it's um, it's one of those things though that yeah, you've you've got to sort of weigh up, um, you know, what's more valuable to you. I know a lot of people early in drafts like to be a bit more cautious, so. Um, there is there is something to be said about going the safer route. And in saying that, to come to Devin Booker's defense a little bit, after the All-Star break and, and the second half of the season, he was actually a top 10 player as well. I think a lot of that was without um, without Chris Paul in the lineup. So I think if I had the stats in front of me, yeah, second half of the year, the last three months, he was the eighth-ranked player. And after the All-Star break, he was the seventh-ranked guy. So yeah. he, does have, he does have upside. I, I think that it might be a little bit of a disservice to say that he's got no upside from this point. But... You do have to remember a lot of those guys are coming back. I think in that time, Anthony Davis didn't play many games. Kawhi is coming back, and yeah. all these other guys are going to be there that weren't there at the end of last season. So it does it does push him a little bit further down the board. But I do think that, especially with Chris Ball turning thirty eight this season, yeah. um, you know there is scope to to beat this ADP at nineteen. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it's more likely that Anthony Davis does. Yeah, yeah, and and oh, I mean, who knows? Chris Ball may blow out his knee or do his hamstring or something in the first yeah. game and then book as a top 10 player. So yeah, touch, you, touch you wood, do, not hoping for that to happen. No, you don't, we don't want that to happen. And, and he's been relatively healthy. Um, Chris yeah, he Paul, surprisingly, so, uh, I mean, I think we thought he was pretty much not done, but um, he was having, I've, I've been be discrediting him for, for three years. I've been yeah. knocking down my rankings for three years and it still yeah. hasn't really, uh, he's beaten the, my projections every time. Yeah. Um, okay, so next one. Uh, so, so two guys who are, are similar, similar in terms of ADP, but also just in terms of what they bring uh, in in fantasy production and the position they play on the court. Um, so at number thirty-two, Pascal Siakam and Bam at a bio. Um, I'll lead this one off. Uh, for I don't know, Bam's one of these guys. I've never actually had him. I don't think on a yeah. team and. I know he's really good, but f for me, I'm going Siakam. Um, yeah, and it's more for me. It, he's he's handy in assists, a, a little bit, almost like the Lucas sort of thing. He can give you some out of position stats here, um, and in Roto, that that's really nice. And and also, even if you're if you're punting, so I went Siakam with my third pick. I think he's in a, a center, team where he? I was punting. Um, big man stats, so punting yeah. blocks, punting rebounds, because Siakam will give you some assists. He, yeah. He'll get you some steals. Um, he'll hit some threes. He's pretty efficient. So he, he does bring some of those guard sort of heavy stats. Um, and he was really good last year. I know he was yeah. injured to begin the season, and I think I got him at around pick 70 or 80 from memory. Um, and he ended up um, being sort of a difference maker in quite a few leagues for me. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether you had him in any of your leagues, but um, he was fun. He was really fun. And, and I think he had that sort of breakout season where, where everyone got on board and then he, he didn't take a step back. I just don't think he progressed as people thought he might. Um, and so he, he sort of fell a little bit, um, but I think he's figured out his role now and, uh, and the Raptors obviously need him out there as much as they can. So, so for me, it's Siakam here. Yeah, um, this of all the players that you've sent me, this was the hardest one for me because I think on my rankings, these guys are literally right next to each other. Um, I've slightly gone the Bam route. Mm -hmm. I think, like I said, they're neck and neck for me. I think last season, based on what they put up, Siakam was 35th per game and Bam was 39th per game. Um, Siakam actually played more games than Bam, even though he started the year um, with that injury. So that's interesting upon reflection. I think by all accounts, we would have, if you just thought about the season that they both had last year, I think most people would say that Bam had a worse season than Siakam, um, but there's only four ranking spots of difference in their nine category value. So I think that with Bam, there's a little bit more of a bounce back ability than than Pascal, just because um, the reason that so he two seasons ago he was a second round guy. Kyle Lowry comes in, he drops a lot of assists. Tyler Hero is taking another step forward. Um, Jimmy Butler's still the man, but I think 
it was definitely very evident in the playoffs last season that when Bam doesn't get going, the Miami Heat are a worse team. So I think there will be a little bit more emphasis on making sure that Bam is um, involved as a, a primary scorer, a primary playmaker this season. It, it may not be a huge change, but it might be just enough to to push him back up. Maybe. 10 or so spots in the rankings, in my opinion, like just small little changes here and there. And that's just sort of enough to get him over the line for me. Um, I think that, yeah, he's just got the ability to, instead of averaging three and a half assists, it might be four. Uh, instead of averaging 19 points, it might be 20 points. Um, and I think that Pascal is still fighting with the ascension of Scotty Barnes. Um, you know, a, a few other OGs, he was in and out of the lineup last year. Uh, Fred Van Vliet was in and out of the lineup last year. And um, when those guys are out, he played a very much, he was pretty much their primary point guard really when, when Mm. Fred was out of the lineup. So, and I think Scotty Barnes might eat a little bit into that. Whereas I don't, I don't see any more risk with Bam getting lower than he was last season um, with a few of those other guys just getting older uh, and and their roster is pretty bare. Like the Miami Heat roster, their depth, Mm. especially in the, in the front court is, is quite thin. So I don't really see any risk to Bam's value. So I'm Bam slightly just because of the safety and I'm projecting a little bit of a bounce back. Yeah, look, I think very close, uh, obviously. Very close. And I think I heard Josh talking about uh, yesterday or the day before about Miami potentially shifting Bam to the four and starting Yurtz. I don't see that happening. Um, neither, neither. But that shows you just how thin they are in the front They're court. very bare, yeah. That. Yeah. Um, so no, look, I think, I think, I mean, both are very safe in terms of their role and, and, they're, and they're fair points that, um, Siakam sort of assumed that primary ball handler role when Van Fleet had a few niggling injuries, which yeah. he seems to have every year actually, but, yeah. um, but on the flip side, Kyle Lowry is not a picture of health either and, and has some off court stuff going on as well. So, um, yeah, look, I think both at, at this spot. You can't really go wrong with with either player. Yeah, I think they're both solid, safe picks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so jumping down a little bit, pretty again, pretty close in terms of of the ADP. So at thirty nine, um, Zach Levine and and Bradley Beal. Um, th- this one for me was was tricky because I think Beal has the upside here. Like we've mm. we've seen what Beal can do. But chances are he's not going to be able to do that with Porzingis. But how healthy is Porzingis? Um, so where where would you lean uh, in this one? Yeah, so this one this one I kind of I looked at. And I thought, oh yeah, okay, I know where where I'm going. And then I looked into it a little bit more, and I was like, oh, actually, hold on, it's it's probably a little bit closer than than I thought. I, I am going to go with Bradley Beal on this one. Um, again, it is quite close to me. I think the only reason I'm there is because just I, I think. Beal just has a higher ceiling than than Zach Levine. Um, Zach Levine represents, or they both kind of represent the players that I don't really love in fantasy basketball. And they're like the big popcorn kind of points per game um, numbers with not a whole lot else. Like the steals blocks aren't really there. Um, you know, they're actually, neither of them are, are huge three-point scorers. I think Levine's probably a little bit more off the top of my head. Um, you would, uh, I think off the top of your head, think that they're, better, you know, threes per game. I guess Levine put 2.8 up a game, but lower than three uh, for both of these guys. I think just the fact that Beal has been a top 20 guy before Levine hasn't just leans me to to Beal's side. But um, yeah, that's that's really the only reason that I'm, I'm going that way. I'm not as concerned with, with Porzingis. Uh, we've seen Beal play with like a Russell Westbrook and still succeed. Yeah. I don't think that Pozingas is is like that. And I think that Beal is still obviously the number one guy. They paid him as such. Um, so he's going to get his shots. It's just whether or not the efficiency is there. We saw it drop right off last season. Um, yeah, and how much of last season was the injuries to his wrist and and how much was the fact that he's just maybe not as good as we thought he was a couple of seasons ago. But yeah, I think for me, the upside is still worthy enough. I don't think Levine. Levine's a safe guy in that sort of, uh, fourth round to me, late third, fourth round, whereas Beal has a bit more upside. Yeah, I think I agree on this one. So Levine is is safe. You know what you're going to get. Um, 
Beal <coughs> has that has that upside that we saw, and I think he actually had his best season when he was with Westbrook. So yeah. Um, and yeah, look, I think in terms of last season, there were a few players actually that that came out of the gates and and were pretty disappointing, especially when it comes to efficiency. Um, Beal being one of them, Lillard was another one, um, yeah. Jason Tatum was another one. And I think from memory, they they used new balls last season. So uh, oh, that, yeah. that wouldn't, like, I think that probably played somewhat of a fact, not a huge one, but I mean, if you've been using the same ball for eight years, however long you've been in the league, and then they switch it up, um, there's a small adjustment, but he did have that wrist injury. Um, so yeah. yeah, look, I, I would go Beal here just for the upside. I think once you get beyond round three, four, if if you've gone pretty safe, you can start looking at upside a bit rather than yeah. um, those guys that maybe their floor is a bit safer, but uh, the ceiling's not as high. So um, yeah, yeah and, and I, I just I feel like I feel a bit better with Beal and his ability to get some steals, um, which I don't think Levine's ever really showed. But but Beal has had you know seasons where he's put up a steal and a half, a one point three steals per game, and and he's had three seasons inside the top fifteen. So uh, whereas yeah, Levine hasn't done that before. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so next one at pick fifty. Um, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes. So two guys coming off pretty impressive rookie seasons. Uh, I didn't have either of these guys in any of my teams last year, so I I can't talk from sort of personal experience of of rostering them. Um, Based on uh, hype and chatter and and what I'm hearing on podcasts and that sort of thing, I think I know who you'll go with this one. (laughs) Um, But would you go with Mobley or Barnes? Uh, I'm a Mobley man. Um, Is is that what you, you predict that one, right? I had a feeling you would. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm a Mowgli man. The, the spanner in the works here is if we if we're doing this on Roto, um, you know, how much are we projecting the free throw percentage to increase or improve from Mobley? Um, in saying that, though, Scotty Barnes is not the best free throw shooter either. So, in my opinion, Mobley just has a much higher ceiling. Like he he has the the stat profile that resembles those elite big guys in fantasy basketball. You, you're talking about, yeah. Um, Anthony Davis's, uh, your Carl Anthony Towns, those kind of types. Um, he he has a like a legitimate shot at, shot at being a top twenty player this season if it all comes together. I think Donovan Mitchell coming over does put a little bit of a dampener on that like you know top one percent outcome for him. But I still think that Mobley is just a little bit higher in terms of upside. He's got more scope to improve his minutes this season than, than Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes was already playing 35 minutes a game last season under Nick Nurse. That could be 38. We, I mean, I guess you could say that, but uh, yeah, just the, the value in blocks that Mobley provides. Um, once you get outside of your Go Bears and um, uh, Rob Williams, I think I think Mobley is in that next tier with your Miles Turners and Kristaps Porzingis at, as those kind of shot blockers, and we do know that like the value of that category is concentrated in a few guys. So that alone pushes him above Scotty Barnes for me, and then just the upside if he if he does improve his shooting, I can see him improving his points and steals and assists as well as he gets a bit more confident in in his second year. But yeah, I, I do like both. I actually had Scotty Barnes in a few dynasty leagues, so. I, I do have a lot of stock in, in Scotty Barnes and I think he's um, surprised a lot of us early in his career. And I think he's going to play a bit more of a playmaking role this season. And he and Pascal Siakam might even push Fred Van Vliet off the ball a little bit more. So I've got them both pretty close. But yeah, Mobley is someone who I think uh, can legitimately be a second round guy this season. Yeah, look, I, I agree with this one. I, I would go Mobley for the reasons you've said, basically, I think there's more room for him to improve. Um, uh, Lowry Markin is not there. I mean, that doesn't have a huge impact, but it maybe frees up a rebound or two, um, not playing sort of those three big men lineup. Uh, While I think we both go Mobley, I have a feeling Barnes is going to end up with the higher ADP. Um, He seems to be a a bit of a... Yeah, I I don't know. just, Just sort of... I think listening to some other guys talk on podcasts and saying that they would almost go into the third round to take Scotty Barnes, um, which yeah, I would Okay, right. Um, no, I wouldn't either. So, yeah, look, I don't 
I don't know that for sure. That uh, that's just me sort of taking a guess. But I would go. I would go Mobley here. I think just watching him play. Um, I, I like to do the eye tests, and, and I mean both players are, are very impressive. But mm. Mobley, I, I just think has that X factor. Um, yeah. Where was he, was he your him. rookie of the? Who was your rookie of the year? Did you have either of these guys as your pick for rookie of the year last year? Uh I I. I think they were in the discussion. Uh, it, it was pretty close. Like I wouldn't have been annoyed with, with either of them. I probably would have had Mobley, and I don't know whether that injury late in the season maybe hurt him yeah. a little bit. Um, but yeah, I had like, Mobley too. Yeah, he was my yeah. he was my pick. Yeah, I I think probably. I mean, you just look at what. Um, Cleveland did last year. Uh, they they yeah. fell away a little bit at, at the at back end of the season, but they were arguably the most surprising team in the league with how good they were. Um, and, yeah. and Mobley was a huge reason for that. So, yeah, no, I'm um, a I'm a big fan of Evan Mobley. I I, I pretty much had him as a basically an all defensive kind of um, player last season in his rookie year, and that just doesn't happen. So he did he did kind of. Um, what I like to see in a lot of my rookies is is improvement throughout the season. And he kind of just stayed the same, like 15, mm. 8, 2.5, 1.7 blocks uh, in the first half of the season, in the second half of the season, after the All-Star break. Um, so that is something that I, I would like to see in like my second and third year guys, that kind of like seasonal progression. We didn't really see that with Mobley, but I think because of the fact that they were a competing team in the playoffs, um, there wasn't really that opportunity to feature him more on offense, like kind of force that. Whereas I think going into the, his like second off season in, in the NBA, he'll, he'll come back a better player. And I think that um, especially with Cleveland setting up the way that they are, yeah. I think he's a big reason that, that they're, they're willing to push all their chips into the middle because they, they believe in this guy. And I, yeah, I think he's just going to be uh, a really, really special talent. I think on a nine category ranking, it will come down to the free throw percentage though. But I think that there's no reason, like we saw even in the all-star break when they did that uh, shooting, what was it that shooting stars comp with he Garland yeah. and, and and like his shot looks really nice and clean. Uh, I've got no worries of it being at least sort of um, average. I don't think it'll be punt worthy necessarily in, in year two. No, and, and just having a quick look here at his numbers, yeah, I mean, 66%, it's, it's obviously, it's not what you want, but he, he only shot 3.7 free throws a game, so it's yeah. not killing you. Um, yeah. And, and, and yeah, look, I, I think, I mean, even though Donovan Mitchell will be there and he's obviously going to soak up points, I could see Mobley scoring going up slightly this year. Um, Me too just natural progression, but also just having those better players around him. And if, if a team, they're, they're going to have to focus a lot on Donovan Mitchell because he's a proven yeah. um, sort of 26, 28, 30 point scorer. So, um, all right. So moving along, 79, Michael Porter Jr. or Tobias Harris. For me, it's Michael Porter Jr. easily, this one, but that's, that's me. Are you on board with that one, or, or would you go, uh, Mister Boring Tobias Harris? Um, well, to be honest, when you sent this through, I was thinking of Kevin Porter Jr., but the results the same anyway. Um, Michael Porter Jr. I I'm well off Tobias Harris this season, so yeah. um, to me, Michael Porter Jr. wins this one fairly comfortably. Um, I was on record last season saying that I was off Michael Porter Jr. I called him a bust several times in our preseason when he was getting drafted in the the third or sometimes even the late second round. Yeah. And um, that obviously I didn't expect his injury to happen and for him to be as bad as he was, but um, I, I'm not, I'm on record as not being the biggest fan of Michael Porter Jr., but I still think that he's got way more upside than Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris, especially after the trade last season when James Harden came in, he wasn't a top 100 guy. He gets no steals, no blocks. The threes are dropping. Um, the assists are going to completely dry up with Harden, uh, Maxi, and Embiid doing all of that. The rebounds are not going to be there. PJ Tucker comes into the lineup, so you might even see his minutes drop as well. Um, I'm, I'm really, really worried about Tobias Harris this season. And, and to be honest, I'm not drafting Harris inside the top 100. I just don't I don't see the point. I don't see the upside. And there's nothing but downside for me for him. So uh, almost by default, uh, Michael Porter Jr. wins this matchup because, yeah, I'm just really, really off Tobias Harris this season. Yeah, I'm, as I said, I, I'm on Michael Porter Jr. <clears throat> um, yeah, look, I mean, if, if Harris fell to me in, in the 10th round, I might grab him, but he's going to go before that. Someone yeah. 
someone will, will have had him in the past and will go, no, nah, he's good, he's good, he'll be he'll bounce back. So um, Michael Porter Jr., look, I was one of those that probably got aboard the hype last season. Yeah. Um, I don't think I took him in the second round, but pretty certain I took him in the third round. Okay, yeah. Uh, and he was another one of those guys who was really inefficient. To He only played 12 games or something, but yeah. he was very inefficient, which was unlike his previous season or, or career, basically. Um I think, yeah, I mean, if you can get him at, at around here, pick 80, 79, 80, um, there's clear top 50 upside if he can stay healthy. That That's the concern here is, is yeah. health, um, especially with him having now injured his back. Well, he came into the NBA with a back thing. Yeah. That was the reason um, he slipped to 14, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 I think teams were very hesitant to draft him. Um, and... So it, it's not a one-off freak sort of thing. No. It does make you a little bit concerned that this is going to be there for his career because anyone who's had a back injury um, knows that they don't go away. Um, any Not quickly. And, and there's, they're injuries that have required surgery too. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, if, if you don't if you sort of look beyond that, then for me it's Michael Porter Jr. pretty comfortably yeah. here. Yeah, um, there's, there's just, there's, to me, there's just no point drafting Tobias Harris at this spot because, yeah, you're just not going to get any upside, and and you know, even if Michael Porter Jr. does get injured, then that's all right. It's at the point in the draft where it's not the worst thing in the world. Last year it was because you invested yeah. a lot of capital in him, um, but this this year, if you're getting him around this spot, it's it's you can recover from that. So I think the upside is worth the punt at this point. I, I would I would say that the the shooting and this is why I had him as a bust a couple of uh, last preseason was because the shooting he had. Um, before last year was was in my opinion unsustainable so i think he was hitting 54 percent from the field um i expect that to be a bit more like a mid to high 40s in in his field goal percentage which changes a lot of his value um he's a big uh efficiency guy he, he can get you a steal in a block or close to it but the assists aren't there um with jamal murray and Jokic, he's not going to be a 25 point per, per night scorer um, but so to me, his upside is probably more that like 50 to 60 range. Yeah. And then if you take into account the injury risk, I think, I think this is about right for, for MPJ for me. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be reaching too much higher than this. Um, yeah. despite the fact that he, he could, uh, finish, as you said, 50. Um, yeah. So yeah, th- this is about right, but, but go with him. Uh, and the last two names that we've got, um, Two of many names on the paces that people are discussing this season because we yeah, don't really very, know. very relevant. Um, so at pick 100, Jalen Smith or Isaiah Jackson, uh, who, who's your guy here? This is another tough one. Um, I, I've got very all over the place thoughts on Isaiah Jackson. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go Jalen Smith at, at pick 100 here, I think. Whilst I really like Isaiah Jackson, I've got him again in a lot of dynasty uh, leagues. I think his upside is tremendous. I think at pick 100, you're still filling out your starting roster spot. So this would be what your eighth round kind of kind of round range. I still think you're looking for guys who you, you, you're confident in them producing the value or beating this value. Isaiah Jackson could smash this. He could also be outside the top 160, um, and yeah. there's no guarantee that he's going to get the time to beat this value. Yes, we all expect Miles Turner to be traded, but we don't know who's coming back. They obviously went out and signed. Um, who did they sign? Sorry, in the from the Suns, they signed uh, a center and put an offer sheet out there. So it's not as though they're looking at Isaiah Jackson as the um, the savior for the center position. So. Mm-hmm. For me, I think Jalen Smith is guaranteed to, well, not guaranteed, but very likely to beat pick 100. Um, he was a top 100 guy in like 25 minutes a night after the All-Star break when he was traded to the Pacers. So I think that he's a really good rebounder, um, should get you over a block, should get you over a three, good, efficient player. I'd be taking the safe option at this point. Um, I love Jackson as a, as a late round guy, but I think his Yahoo change, his rank, changed to 85 recently and that's that's too rich for my blood as much as i like him just because there's there's not enough certainty for me for me to take a punt on a player who's at this moment a, a backup in sort of like a 16 to 20 minute a night role 
Yeah, look, the, I think this is one of those ones that could change, obviously, dramatically over the next month because if Miles Turner gets traded, then this flips and you go... It's a and, different well, story. depending on yeah. who, who comes back. Yeah. I mean, if, if a centre was to come back, then possibly not. But if it was for picks or uh, players that aren't sort of comparable, then Jackson, as you said, he could he could smash this. He could be a top 60 player, top 50 player. Um, and we saw flashes last season, but... He he did he did seem a little fragile. Um, I mean, I know it was a mm. small sample size, but um, he sort of got injured, came back, got injured, came back. Then they were yeah. sort of a bit cautious with him. Jalen Smith seems a little bit more durable um, and was impressive, uh, as you said, in 25 yeah. minutes um, after the All Star break, he was a top 100 player. Um, he hasn't got those that upside in blocks that those that that Jackson's got. Um, he's not. He doesn't feel like a player that could break into have a sort of a breakout top fifty season, top sixty no. season. But I think he's really solid around this mark, um, just with with what he brings. And and they've already gone on record and said he's going to start at power forward. So yeah, uh, they're not act well. You would hope they're not actively trying to win games. So it's not like they're going to um, sort of curb his minutes if he if he does have a couple of bad games. He should have a pretty clear path to minutes and I think I mean his competition is maybe O'Shea Brissett who's who's not great he's solid but he's not great um so yeah look for me I, I'm going Smith here uh yeah despite we sort of talk about at this point in the draft you do want to go for upside um but I just think with Jackson as you said he could be could be top 50 but he could be outside the top 160 yeah. there's yeah. so much variation there um Whereas Smith, you feel like he's going to be between about seventy and and a hundred. Yeah, no yeah. I what. think I think that, that like there is upside from Jalen Smith here. Like we said, in twenty five minutes a night after the All Star break, he was the eighty uh, seventh ranked player. So I would almost look at that as his floor. Um, yeah, so I, yeah. I'm I feel pretty safe at him being a top ninety guy. Like you said, I don't think he's got top fifty upside. Like so, he's probably like yeah between seventy and ninety that kind of range, um, which is which is good value at this point. Uh, pick 100, uh, I think he's beating this rank. Um, and Isaiah Jackson, yeah, the, the upside is there, but it's not guaranteed. And I still would rather have more confidence at, at this point taking Isaiah Jackson. And we don't even know, yes, they've said Jalen Smith is their starting power forward, but how many minutes does he play at power forward? How much minutes does he play at center? Um, you know, we could pencil Jackson in to be the backup for um, Miles Turner, but he might not be the only backup for Miles Turner. They could... They could be playing him 20 minutes a night, 22 minutes a night, or they could be playing him 15 minutes. It's, it's just hard to tell. And I think, yeah, it's just, it's just too early for me to take the punt on on Jackson yeah. at this point, as, as much as I love him. I, I feel bad because I really like the guy. I actually think he's he's a really good player. And and like I said, I've got a lot of stock in him in Dynasty, but I think the hype is, is going to build a bit too high on him. I'm interested to see if on the next uh, rankings update and Yahoo and those kind of things and and see if that swings back the other way or, or, or how it all um, works out when we get closer to, to draft season. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. So that's all the guys that I had. Um, pretty good mix there, I think. So give give people a bit of an idea of where we're going. And, and but, I mean, this could change with, with a couple of these guys yeah. as we get closer to, to draft season. And I mean, it feels every year. It feels like we're starting mock drafts earlier and earlier, which makes the season feel like it's further away. Um, but we have only got five weeks, I think, till the yeah. start of the season. So, um, yeah, well, fo- football starts this weekend, so all, all the football players are gonna are gonna start to all the fantasy football players are gonna come in, and um, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll pick up steam before we know it. We've, we, it's the first off season we've had for a little while that's actually been a full off season with um, obviously. Yeah. All, all the interruptions that COVID brought around. So it, this one feels like it's going a little bit longer than all the others, but uh, yeah, no, it's getting exciting. And um, we've got a few, few drafts on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. As do I, yeah. Plenty happening. Um, so before we, we jump out, do you want to just sort of give us an idea? I know you've launched a new website. Um, yep. And so uh, just tell people sort of what's going on over at your site and, and all the work that you've been doing. 
Yeah, so um, just recently launched uh, ballboysmba.com. It's uh, essentially, we're starting off with just our um, season or draft guide. So you can sign up there for $10 for the whole season, get access to uh, my rankings where you'll see how I've ranked all the guys we talked about today and my top 156 players. So standard uh, 12 team by 13 round. Uh, rankings uh, I take into account. We talk a lot about punting on our show, so I've got everyone's punt ranks um, listed on there. Um, it's it's catered mostly towards head-to-head uh, category leagues, but you can also get a lot of roto value in there as well. Um, we're also dropping some Q&A podcasts for subscribers. That'll be happening every week into the season. Um, I'm about to... We've just we've put up our punt free throw guide up. Our punt field goal percentage guide is coming up soon, which I'm sure you might want to check out, Adam. I know you have an affinity to, to punt field goal. Um, and then and then check us out over on YouTube, uh, Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, all that sort of stuff where we're still pumping out a lot of content. We're doing our positional tiers at the moment. I've done the point guards through small forwards and then uh, early next week, the power forwards and, and senders will come out. So and mock drafts, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, check us out on YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe. And you're riding solo at the moment with all of your pods. Are you getting yeah. your running partner back soon, or is that? Is it he's just gallivanting. You now? He's gallivanting across uh, Europe at the moment. He's right. he's finding himself, and he's he's <laughs> spending some time over there. So he's out for a little while, but he he will be coming back. Um, okay. And then and then I'll actually be taking my turn to, to do a bit of a holiday. So uh, closer yep. to closer to Chrissy. Uh, Christmas for the American viewers. Um, he'll he'll be back and and in the the head head seat and then and then we'll be back in in the next year and and doing our thing together so i'm trying to get as many guests on the podcast as i possibly can so people don't get sick of my voice but yeah you'll you'll be hearing a lot of me in this preseason yeah yeah no no no, that's good um okay well look that that that'll probably do it uh for today so then so thanks for coming on it was it was good that we were able we arranged this pretty quickly and as i said it's good to have aussies because it's easy to match up the times yeah Um, easy easy to coordinate it is, yeah. So, uh, no, thanks for coming on. We'll, we'll have you on again. And I think I'm potentially coming on your show in a couple of weeks. We, yeah, I don't know yeah. if we actually locked in a date, but we will. It, it, it'll be soon. Yeah, we'll get you It'll around. be soon. Um, yeah, so uh, remember, you guys can all check out our content uh, as well, including our, our Discord server, which is it, it's very hectic in there at the moment. Um, fbibasketball.com is the website and there's a link there to, to jump into the Discord. Uh, we're also now on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, basically all your podcast uh, platforms. Uh, we'd love it, of course, if you could give this a thumbs up and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel as, as we build, build our followers very slowly. Uh, and until next time, we will catch you later. See you guys.